girlies and welcome back to the pod. Today is a super exciting episode because I have Sophia here with me. Sophia has a blog called Dear Monday Blog where she gives advice and it's super awesome place for young girls and she also just released new merch which is so 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 exciting. Hi, everybody. I am so excited, a little nervous. I feel like every time I listen to a podcast, the guest is always like, I'm a little nervous. And I'm always, I'm always wondering, like, why are you nervous? Like, all you have to do is talk. And I love talking. This is weird because I've always written for my blogs and shared advice, you know, where I can edit it and really think about what I'm going to say. So this is new. I'm out of my element, but just want to put it out there how inspired I am by Carmen. I mean, she pretty much got me so excited about becoming an advice giver, an older sister online. And she, you know, obviously had a very big platform even before I started with my blog. And I definitely follow in her footsteps in many aspects, whether it be like the social media element, the advice element. And yeah, I'm just really great to have such an amazing role model. And I'm really excited to be here on the podcast. Merch, yes, just came out with merch. That is because, um, I don't know, I've had the blog for like a year now and I would love to help, you know, strengthen and unify um, all the readers with merch. They have slogans that say, don't talk to me, I'm on Accutane or hot girls can't park or your local overthinker. Yeah, so I think that, I think that if you are into any of those things, definitely dm me or check the blog yes can't wait for this episode that was really long-winded yeah that's okay that was so sweet okay so today we're going to be giving y'all advice i think maybe a week ago or something a bunch of you guys sent in scenarios or just questions asking us stuff so that's what we're gonna be doing today our first one reads hi so there's this boy in my history class We always have this cute banter, and he asked me to be his partner on this month-long project. I really, really like him, but I can't tell if he likes me or not. Should I just play it out or make a move? Okay, love this question. This is so fun. Like, I read this, and I'm excited for you. I have a few things to say. First, you don't have to choose whether you're going to, like, play it out or make a move. You can kind of do both, and I think... Um, as an overthinker myself and as someone who gets uncomfortable and needs to make a plan, it's hard for me to realize that like guys are so different and they're almost clueless and they don't really think like we do. And I, I think you can simultaneously play it out and make a move. Also, we need to point out that you actually hit the freaking jackpot because you have the perfect excuse to get close to this guy. You have a month long project together. I mean, Even if you guys don't end up having any sort of romantic chemistry or anything like that, at least you guys have to be good friends after a month-long project, working together, getting his number, doing study hangouts, like late nights on FaceTime. Come on. This is, this is really perfect. And I, I'm excited for you. I think this is really going to work out. I also feel like just because the project is so long, you will definitely get to know whoever this guy is, and also probably end up being able to tell, okay, does he actually like me? Because if you're with someone that long, I feel like you can kind of get a vibe of, oh, we're just going to be friends, or oh, okay, maybe it'll be a little more than friends. And I definitely think spending that amount of time with him will kind of just show you that. And even like Sophia said, if nothing happens, at least you have a good friend, and it can still be a fun experience. Totally. And back to like your idea of do I just wait out or do I make move? Like, I think you totally have the right and should make those moves of getting his number, initiating the FaceTimes, inviting him over to do homework. Like, whatever it is, if he's not doing those things first because maybe he's nervous or scared, you totally can. And I would hate to see you be like two months, two months into the project and like not really like taking advantage of it yet. So if you have that opportunity, do it. And for anyone who is kind of in this situation or doesn't necessarily have someone who they're like in a month-long project with and like this kid is still in your class, take those moves to like do homework with someone in your class. Take that common denominator and run with it. So that's my advice. Yeah, I feel like just if you're the person you like is you're at school with them, I feel like that makes it a lot easier because you can always text them or snap them being like, hey, have you done this homework? 
can you help me with this problem? And that's just a way to reach out that's less awkward, I feel like. Um, so I definitely think the month-long project will definitely be a good way. Like Sophia said, you don't necessarily have to make the first move. And it's important to realize, like, guys get nervous, too. So it might be maybe this guy really does like you, but he could also just be scared about what you think because maybe he doesn't know that you like him too. TBH, quite literally everything, but how to balance life and school and extracurriculars as well as how to deal with stress that you have no clue why you're stressing or what you're stressing about. This, I think, is very relatable for me. I feel like I'm a fairly anxious person. Um, I tend to stress about things that don't need to be stressed about, so I definitely understand that, and I think it's important just to know that being stressed, being, like, anxious a little is normal, like, everybody gets stressed, especially when you have so much on your mind, but what helps me for balancing everything is to write to-do lists. I talk about this all the time um but I always feel like I have so much going on in my head that if I don't write something down I'm gonna forget to do it or I'm gonna just feel more stressed so if you write down everything you have to do so like homework if you have extracurriculars um anything you might have to do when you should start studying I think that's also really helpful and if you use a calendar write writing down when you have tests when you have sports practice or whatever else you're doing it just really helps if you plan stuff out so it's another thing that you wouldn't have to be worried about in the future I absolutely like second that I think that um lists are my total go-to with stress I also think that um you can prioritize certain things on your list because sometimes I have 10 things on my list and one of the lower things on my list should be up at the top And so you can put things, you can prioritize and organize your lists. And then the things that happen to be at the bottom for that day that you just don't have time to do, you move to the next day. And I honestly talk to my friends about this all the time. I mean, we think about the fact that you could wake up early the next morning. And I love the feeling of say seeing that I have like 10 extra pages to do in my English reading. It's too late. I want to watch my TV show. And like the peace of knowing that I can go to bed and be like, just do it in the morning like I I think that that's totally fine and people need to normalize saying no to things like there was a point in my life where I was balancing too many things and then you have to start being like no and there's a lot of pressure from people around you whether it be sport that you've done all your life or a club that you're involved in or something that your parents want you to do and there's a point when you get to high school where you're juggling five APs and all these other things I mean not five but you know what I mean and you just have to say no. And I think people need to realize that that's okay. And saying no to things is totally fine. Also, meaningful breaks. I cannot go home right after a long day of school and get right to it. Like that, people who can do that are insane to me. Like you need to have meaningful breaks and reward yourself. Put little rewards within your list. Go get a cookie, go to ice cream with friend in between, go on a little walk, watch the sunset, whatever it is that's going to give you life and joy and a little bit of vitality in between each thing that you do is going to be so transformative in your day because you'll be able to have that fuel and that energy to keep going. So I would suggest in between your school day and your other activity or whatever it is, honestly, going to say this, even if it's mindlessly scrolling through TikTok. I don't know why, but that's a break for me and I'll take that break. So whatever it is you choose, but be able to space out everything that you have if possible. I totally agree with that. I think breaks are super important, especially too, if you've been studying for a while, if you've been trying to do an assignment for like over an hour, you can start feeling yourself lose focus. Maybe you're checking your phone more often and that's just going to end up you taking more time to do an assignment so take breaks like when you can feel yourself losing focus just say okay I'm gonna go downstairs I'm gonna go get a snack from my kitchen or like Sophia said like leave your house walk around be with friends and just realize that like if you actually take those breaks when you sit down to do the work you're gonna be more focused and it's gonna end up taking you less time and also going back to like doing too much stuff I know my sister goes to boarding school and she always talks about how she has no free time, how she's constantly stressed. 
But then also at the same time, she's spending hours doing homework assignments that shouldn't be taking hours just because she hasn't taken a break all day. She hasn't had time to just sit in her bed and watch Netflix. So take those breaks and I think overall it'll benefit you. And also what I like to do is just on the weekend or maybe just sometime in the middle of the week when I'm really not feeling it, just put my phone away um, and just have a little, yeah, put the phone away. Have like a little self-care night. Take a bath. Yeah, yeah. No, seriously, because I know looking at my phone for too much, one, it makes my head hurt. Two, it makes me anxious. Or just like looking at Snapchat, that's just like really overwhelming. So just take a break. Put your phone away. Watch a movie. Read a book. Go outside. Be with friends. Whatever. Just- totally. I love it. I love it. I love how I'm like mindlessly school through TikTok. Actually, I'm revoking that comment. <laughs> do not do that because you know what? Your first goal was, oh my God, I'm so bored. I just need like a little break from schoolwork. Then you're on it for 30 minutes. You're insecure AF because you see 20 hot girls and you just didn't even think that that was possible, but it is. So you know what? Revoking that comment. Terrible advice. Kick me off the podcast. No, don't do that. <laughs> no, that's totally okay. I feel like I like sometimes we'll just find myself going on TikTok which I feel like is fine if you're just taking a little break. But if you're on there for like hours just doing absolutely nothing, I don't think that is beneficial. I feel like it's more beneficial to like go be with friends, go outside, go drive somewhere, take a drive, do anything. Okay, so this question, I don't know why, but it just really stuck out to me from the others. And it's a little it's a little shocking, so I'm going to read it. I seem to be losing my temper with everyone recently. Any advice for how to stay calm when you are angry or under pressure? Okay, such a great question. I totally think that this is a valid question. I am such like a happy, happy, happy and bright, positive person, but I don't know why I think there's like this little ounce of aggression that has just bloomed or sprouted within me and I don't know where it's come from I don't know why I'm so like I'm just so impatient maybe or very like uh, I don't know things are making me angry and that's same, weird same. but <laughs> so I just wanted to talk about two things that I think you have to do a having anger and having a temper is okay and I'm not saying that you shouldn't have one I mean I'm sure it comes from a good place and there is something deep rooted that is you know, sparking that anger. So I think you really have to think about what it is and addressing that head on. If it's like a situation where your mom constantly is asking you to do X or, you know, you feel pressure from X friendship or whatever it is, like really think about those things and think about how you can hit it on the head and just resolve it if possible. Another thing is communication. If you're in a day where you're in a bad mood, like some days when I'm in a bad mood, I literally start off and I'm like, Mom, just so you know, I'm in a really bad mood today. Excuse my anger. Excuse, like, my temper. I'm just really mad. And then they know, you know? And it say it has nothing to do with you. Because I am, you know, a very self-conscious person. And I've had friends who can be in a mood. And when they don't communicate with me that they're in a mood, I totally think it's directed towards me. And your parent might think it be it is directed towards them or whoever you're interacting with that day. So I think it's really critical that you communicate with the people about how you're feeling. That, also, be good at apologizing. Like, I have many experiences where someone has done something or been in a mood, whatever, but a good apology is very, um, it can resolve a lot of things. And I think that if you want good apologies from your friends or your family, you have to put that out there too. So if you're in a mood or you say something that you didn't mean to say, be good at apologizing and be good at telling people that you're sorry for what you did and work on making it better. That's my advice. Um, I definitely agree and want to emphasize the communication part. I also do this with my family because sometimes I'll just be mad and everything all day. If someone speaks to me, if someone doesn't speak to me, that'll make me mad. Like there is no winning with me in some days. So I feel like especially with my family, like I verbalize it, maybe not in the best way, but I'll say something to make sure like I don't actually do it like if I'm like thinking like oh my god I'm like like, gonna slap you I may or may not say that which I don't know if that's like good but maybe don't like go to that extreme but like just explaining okay just so you know like what Sophia said today is not my day I'm sorry if I act out I just really don't feel good 
It's nothing about you. It's just all me. And today is not my day. Also, I think another thing, just kind of staying calm. If you're angry at everyone, realize that you can't necessarily control other people, but what you can control is how you react to things. So maybe something one of your friends did something really awful to you or said something or maybe was speaking about you behind your back and that just made you really upset and angry. Of course, you're allowed to be upset. You're allowed to be angry. You're allowed to like want to scream and like yell and get upset because of course, like no one wants that to happen to them. But also, it's important to remember that you control how you react and um, you really need to think, I think, that through if that makes sense because that helps me stay calm just realizing, okay, I can't control other people. They're doing their own thing because my gut reaction is, okay, I need to do something about it. Like, I need to fix something because I'm a fixer and I want to fix people even if that like might not be in my wheelhouse or I don't have control over a certain situation so that just helps me to stay calm because I feel like when you're so focused on what everyone else is doing and stuff that might make you angry it's just gonna make you more upset more annoyed and overall just not be beneficial totally agree and one last thing that I just want to add because it totally just came to my mind is <clears throat> my parents pretty much had an intervention with me about my anger like a few weeks ago I don't really know oh it wasn't like I'm not extremely angry but they're, yeah. they're sensitive people so I think they picked up on it and they were just like my parents are very simple people in some senses in the way that like emotions work and I think they just said you know really and at first I was like I was like come on this is awful advice like I just don't want to listen to you but I have been thinking about it and I think it has to do a lot with gratitude at least in my opinion and I think that a lot of the times I get angry or frustrated and I just don't even open my eyes to the amazing life that I live I look outside I have food on my plate like so many things should be making me happy and instead I'm really thinking about the things that are making me angry and that's I don't know I think that's a silly way to live a short life I really do and like I, I say short because you never know you never know. And I'm just saying like, you really have to, you really have to enjoy your life and your days. And when people are frustrating you, hit it, like really, you know, make an effort to calm yourself and tell them how you feel. And I know that that's very oversimplifying it because life is so much more complex than that. But if you can think about it in simple terms and let that direct you and navigate you in the way that you handle yourself, that's great. Also, if it's like a prolonged anger and like this is something serious, really talk to someone about it I would next question I have stretch marks and I don't know what to do what to do because when it gets warmer my friends and I like to do things like go swim in the lake it makes me feel insecure even though I try not to let it bother me okay first thing I want to address is social media with this one I feel like we all follow whether it's actresses tiktokers random influencers friends whatever and you see this idea of people online especially if it's like a celebrity or an influencer where photos can be easily manipulated and not saying everyone does this because a lot of people don't and a lot of people just look great naturally but some people it's not generally realistic and I feel like that makes it really hard especially if you're just scrolling on instagram all the time and every single person you see, you don't see stretch marks anywhere. You don't see anything that people would consider like bodily imperfections, even though that's not what they are. And um, I feel like everyone has stretch marks at some point in their life, whether it's from like growing really fast or whatever it might be. Even guys, like guys get stretch marks too, which I feel like people don't realize. Um, so just like really thinking that it is normal and there's nothing wrong with you and I think that has to be kind of a mindset shift even though you might see your stretch marks and think okay like I really don't like this about me that shouldn't prevent you from going out and I know that's like really easy for me to say but I feel like um you just need to think like okay am I gonna let like these lines on my body prevent me from like actually having fun because when I look back I don't want to look back at my summer and think oh 
Like, I just stayed inside for three months, didn't do anything, didn't do anything fun, wasn't with my friends, and it was only because of these little lines on your body. For sure. I completely agree. Um, I also just want to say that I think that having things on your body that are normally covered when we talk, like when we see them online, is so different from the real life and the real experiences of you and I'm sure your friends. I mean, even those people who are the most flawless Photoshop, cover things up, have insecurities, like that is just so okay. And I think that you have a really great opportunity to have an amazing summer while also being so proud of who you are and living your life with the most positive, excited, enthusiastic attitude. No one, no one. And if they do, I would literally slap them across the face is going to bring it up to you. I mean, no one's going to be like, you're stretch march. Oh my God. No one will bring that up to you. And if they do, you look at them in the eye and you say, yeah, it's my body. I love it. Great. Like that's a hard, that's a hard mentality to have going from like really being insecure about it to like owning it. And I don't know what it's going to take for you to get there. But if that's at least me telling you through the girly girl podcast right now that you got this like you got this I 100% believe that also I had stretch marks on my chest when I was going through puberty you know as we all do and I use bio oil on my stretch marks this like thing that I found on Amazon every single day and they are absolutely completely gone I'm not saying that you need any product or anything to fix yourself but it worked for me it may work for you thought I would put it out yeah no um, I know my sister has a scar on her from surgery and she uses bio oil too, which helps with that. So if you have scars anywhere to try that. This next one is just advice about being the backup friend. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that that's rough. That really makes you feel bad. I feel it. It's just. I don't know what to say, but I feel like just mentally, it's so hard to think that you would be second choice to someone, especially if you would consider one person like your best friend and this person, maybe you were best friends and now you're not hanging out. Now they only ask you if someone else cancels, like that's not okay. And like, you don't need to be friends with this person, but I feel like that's also kind of hard because like, what if this person to you is your best friend and like is maybe one of your only friends and you don't have a big friend group and then I feel like it's kind of hard to like separate yourself from them um but I feel like you kind of have to what do you think yeah I I have a few things the first thing that I'd say is it really depends on which um on the circumstances of this friendship 100 percent. like for example what carmen just said if this is your best friend and they are not your best friend that's a lot different than you having a great group of friends and then a few other people in your life that stand there and just they you feel second tier too like i'll just give an example because i i have friends in my life where they are my number one and that's great and then I have some other friends that are within the same friend group or you know around town or whatever it may be and they do not prioritize me they don't reach out to me we don't make plans unless I ask them to maybe we make plans but I'm their second choice 100% and I have come to a place where like I'm totally okay with that I'm like you know what that is okay because at least they're a little treat in my life. I view them as a treat. When I do get to see them and when I do get to hang out with them, it's great. They're like someone to have there. They're not going to be my first choice. Like I, I, they can be my second choice. I can be their second choice. Like, you know what? That is totally okay. There are other friendships where I slowly start to feel myself becoming like the second priority and that's not okay. And I, I have to, I either have to say it to them. Like, look, sometimes I get your best self. Sometimes I get your second best your worst self sometimes I get sometimes I get the first text sometimes I get the last text that's not fair to me so I'm just trying to know where you're at you can be 100% honest with me and then you go from there so I think you have to understand what this person means to you before you think about critically what you mean to them because you may realize that they're actually your second choice too and that you would rather be with other people and then you're okay with being mutual second choices like maybe that you're okay with that so depends I also feel like, um, going off of what you said, like, it's okay 
not to have everyone be your best friend and for you not to be everybody's best friend. Like what Sophia was saying, you can have friends where maybe you're not the closest and maybe you wouldn't be someone's first choice. But like if you see them a few times, like that's just kind of fun. But again, I feel like if it's one of your best friends, you can feel yourself starting to move like to a place where you're less of a priority. That's not okay. And you really don't deserve that. And also, I think you need to realize, like, do I really want to be wasting my time, wasting my energy on someone who doesn't even want to be with me or who maybe you don't even really want to be with them? Maybe like being with them makes you feel bad about yourself or it's not fun and you'd rather be with other people. So I think just really thinking about the situation as a whole can help as well. I love that. I love it. I love that. But like just really tying this all together and back to what Carmen said in the very beginning, like it is so hard. It's easy to have a friendship breakup when you talk about it and you hear it on a podcast. But when you actually think about the implications of it and how interconnected teen girls are, like you can't just, you can't just friendship break up from someone but you yeah. but you do have to realize how much like you have to own your worth if they don't own your worth you have to own your worth and you know we just are not having fake friends in 2022 period 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 like we're over that like fake friends are just not happening and so you are in control of who you surround yourself with and really think like really think about that and really think about who, who you want to lift you up in life because that because that's what matters I guess at the end of the day yeah also I feel like if someone isn't prioritizing you you don't necessarily have to cut them off on every single thing you don't need to be blocking them but I feel like you can just kind of separate yourself from the situation and just be like okay I'm gonna spend my time with people who actually want to be with me who I actually want to be with and focus on those people like going back to what we were saying earlier instead of focusing like on all the things that make you angry that make you upset that suck in your life focus on some of the good things so like focus on your good friends focus on people who are nice who are funny who make you feel good about yourself who bring you up and I feel like you'll be much happier overall I don't care about my haters anymore because I completely agree I know it's wrong but still I don't care about that either I hate my body, my face, my voice. What do I do? I don't give myself credit for anything and so much more. I just absolutely hate myself. Oh my God, this hurt me so much. Like I hated reading this. Like, uh, oh, I wish I could just jump through the screen and give whoever wrote this in and anyone who feels this way the biggest hug. Oh, ouch. I know it just, that just kind of hurts hearing that because I feel like people... I don't know you on social media all you hear is like love yourself like everyone being all positive which is great because we're trying to influence people to improve their life but then also I feel like if you really truly feel this way like everything sucks you hate everything about yourself that's just really disheartening to hear because I'm sure that you are an amazing person and it's all about your perception of yourself and Maybe it was you, your thoughts that brought you there, or maybe it's other people who have brought you down that brought you there. But I really think if you want to feel better about yourself, which is not an easy thing to do, and it's definitely a process and will take time, but you actually have to make like an active effort and be like, okay, I don't want to feel like this anymore. I feel like crap. I don't even like myself. How can other people stand to be around me? Like, that's just an awful feeling and no one should have to go through that especially for long periods of time where you just kind of hate yourself and hate everything so you need to make like an active effort of okay I'm gonna try better I'm gonna focus on what I do love about yourself maybe it's just a small thing maybe it's something that someone gave you a compliment for one day even if it's just like oh I like your shoes you're like okay that's one thing. That's one thing. Or maybe someone's like, wow, new haircut looks so good in you. Okay, great. Or maybe you're really funny and people notice that about you. Focus on your personality traits. What makes you, you, especially if how you feel on the outside or wait, back up. If how you look on the outside, you don't feel so great about focus on things that are great about you. You're smart. You're funny. All the above. Yeah, I completely agree. 
I love I love what you said about holding on to compliments because I hold on to compliments that people have said to me from years ago that I s- that totally stick with me. Something that comes to my mind, and this may feel a little bit drastic, but and I don't I don't necessarily think that change is always beneficial. But you are talking about your haters. You are talking about so flat out that you hate yourself. I that pains me. I feel like we've established that, but also maybe, maybe you need something that will change up your life and that will give you a fresh start. And I say this only because if I were in that situation, I would need to remove myself from these people in this world that I'm living in. And I would do that by maybe switching schools, maybe going to a camp or a teen tour or something over the summer. I mean, the only way that you're going to get better by yourself surrounded in this environment is changing something drastic. I mean, Telling yourself that you love your new haircut, I I love it, but what is that really going to do when you're within the same environment with these same people who are bringing you down? I mean, I I would want to get right out of there if it's possible for your family and your parents are on board with that. Like, it's a big move, but I I just think that if you if this environment is bringing you to your lowest point, I I don't know, I, I would want to get out of there. No, I I agree. I feel like. If every single person you're surrounded by or you're constantly dealing with these haters, whether it's people at school or just maybe family members, yes, get out of the situation. But again, that's hard. We don't know um, what your situation actually is. But I definitely agree with Sophia, whether that's moving schools or finding an after school activity with new people just being around um, someone different and whether that's changing, uprooting everything or just doing a small thing, like maybe you're joining a sports team with people you don't know or maybe you want to start being in plays. But I think finding an after school activity with like good people or finding something you're interested in can help because I think when you find like an interest that gives you like a new group of people to surround yourself with and also kind of a purpose because especially I'm just gonna make this assumption but I feel like if you hate everything about yourself about life maybe you're feeling a little depressed maybe you feel like nothing is going your way and having like just something to do having like a purpose I feel like can definitely help improve your mood and improve your mindset especially if you're gonna be surrounded by new people who are actually not gonna like hate on everything about you and make you feel worse about yourself so there's this boy who started texting me Loki asked me to see a movie I said I was busy Ugh, I can't stand this kid he's so annoying and always tries to talk to me for now I'm ignoring him but he doesn't seem to get the hint what should I do I don't want to be mean but also I want him to stop bothering me so pretty much how to reject someone in the best way possible and I don't want to say like in a nice way because I feel like there's not really a nice way maybe there is maybe I'm just haven't figured that part out about life um but I definitely think of course you have the right to you know not want to go with someone to something especially if you don't like someone like even as a friend you have a right to say no like what we talked about earlier you're allowed to say no to things You don't have to accept every single thing. And I think that's important to remember because I feel like maybe it's just me, but sometimes I feel like I'm obligated to accept something, even if it's the last thing I want to do, whether that's hanging out with a friend or a guy or just like anything in general. I always feel like that sense of, oh, I need to say yes. And if I say no, then I'm a bad person. Because maybe I don't have anything to do, but I just really, really don't want to go. And um, I think you have the right to that. And I feel like if this guy keeps bothering you, then maybe you need to outright say something and be like, okay, like, thank you for the offer. But like, I really don't feel comfortable doing that or I don't want to go. But I feel like there's definitely ways you can say no without actually saying no like before being like absolutely not no thank you leave me alone especially if you're not a very confrontational person Mm -hmm. okay 
love the fact that we're on this side of the game now where we're not trying to like beg for someone to hang out with us but we get to reject i mean i've never really actually that's a lie but i i, I don't know we're rejecting here this is a this is a time okay yeah i completely agree with carmen i mean you do not have to be nice to someone because they are harassing you i mean i'm not saying that this kid is he just he's not getting the hint you've made it kind of clear honestly i had a friend who had a situation like this was really sweet about it sorry i can't really hear you whatever it is the excuses the guy didn't get it then she just stopped responding like literally just stopped responding and i'm not saying that you have to like say no or like ghost the kid but like when i think about ways that really sucked you can do that if you want or you can just be that confrontational queen and just say hey look i appreciate that you've been reaching out i don't really see um i, I feel like i'm not really looking to like turn our friendship into something more right now but uh, i appreciate like you reaching out whatever it is whatever it is but you got this i'm not i'm not scared for you i think you have i think you have the leg up here excuse me the leg up here and you're gonna you're gonna kill it with this rejection <laughs> i feel like it's just always gonna be awkward no matter what you do but if this guy's really bothering you you just gotta say something whether it's actually ghosting him or if you have to see him in person and being like okay i said no i don't want to go please stop asking me okay done next question i have a really hard time talking to new people guys specifically i can only seem to make friends at the beginning of the school year i want to be able to talk to new people i'm very extroverted but this is a roadblock i've had i've always had any tips okay this is bringing me to one thing in particular and it's the fact that a lot of schools are quickie and a lot of schools have very set social scenes and incorporating yourself into a new group and meeting new people can be a lot trickier than you would have expected when you are such an extroverted person i mean i have tried to reach out to new people at my school and make new friends at my school and it's really hard and uh, if you couldn't tell based off this podcast already i'm extremely extroverted i love making new friends i love talking so that is something that you have to realize is beyond you. And other people's unwillingness to be open to making new friends is beyond you. So don't get mad at yourself for other people's lack of friendship, other people's lack of openness. I mean, that's just teenage girls for you right there. I will say, though, that going back to our first question about, you know, talking to this guy who's in your who's in your science class, like, you really have to draw upon that common denominator, common denominator about what you do have in common with new people. So if there is a friend of yours that is in one of your classes that always happens to, you know, be leaving school at the same time or joining school at the same time as you, you have a mutual, whatever it may be, you can draw upon that and really, like, use that and make it happen. I mean, I can think of a friend of a friend who I've wanted to become friends with, and now we've started, like, you know, hanging out at some points with our mutual friend. And now I've tried to really get to know her. We have an inside joke about coffee. We have an inside joke about, um, like this outfit, like we have little things and that's pretty much driven by me, but I've been going out of my way to make certain friendships happen that weren't really there. And that wouldn't really happen if it were up to them, but that's just up to you, I guess, if that makes sense. No, I think drawing on the mutual friend thing is definitely a good idea but um i also feel like there is a way where you can reach out to people that you might might not necessarily have like a mutual friend because i feel like especially in school like going back to the project question the first thing if you have a project with someone that's a way to be with someone new you can instead of partnering like maybe with one of your friends maybe you can try to reach out to somebody else and also i feel like like what Sophia was saying, your quote unquote like inability to make friends might not necessarily be your fault. Like a lot of people just aren't open to talking to new people. And while that's not fair, it is like the case in most places. But I feel like you can always try to reach out. Like I know this past week I had a girl text me asking me to hang out even though we hung out once and it was like in a big group setting. And um, she had told me how she was struggling with her friend group and was just trying to reach out and make new, meet new people and just be with, like, girls who are actually nice to her. 
And that really resonated with me because I was like, of course, I want to hang out with you. Like, I want to do things like that's awful that you had to go through that. So just kind of putting yourself out there, I feel like can help, but it's not always foolproof. And you will definitely meet some resistance where people are like, oh, my God, she's so weird. Like, why is she talking to me? But then again, it's like, why would you want to be friends with those people? You know, next question. How do you actually know that you're attracted to somebody? I feel like it's complicated depending on the person because sometimes I feel like you just know. You like look at the person and you're like, okay, absolutely. Yes. But then sometimes maybe it's someone that you've seen more in like a friend setting where you're like, do I actually like them or do I just like them as a friend? Which I think that is a more difficult distinction to make and I don't know if I necessarily know the answer to that one um but I feel like it's like one of those things where you just like kind of know deep down even if you're like denying it you just kind of know and I don't I feel like that's a really horrible way of explaining it but there's kind of like a gut feeling I used to think emphasis on used to I used to think that I was a zero to hundred kind of girl. And what I mean by that is like, I either like do not like you, made your ick, like not interested, couldn't even picture it. Or like, I'm so a hundred percent like full in, like this isn't even a question. Like all my friends know the made up nickname, like every, you know, like this is like, yeah, this is a crush. So I used to think that I was zero to a hundred. And in some ways I am like some ways I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm obsessed or no. What's hard for me recently is that am I attracted to him? Do I like him? Or do I just want him to want me? And that's what has been like my difficult thing recently is because I'm like, if I'm going to go for someone, I'm not scared to like, at least make some sort of slight first move, put myself out there in some way. And I'm okay doing that to an extent. But like, I have to think about do I really like this person? Or do I just really want them to want me? And that's what's difficult. And when I figure out that all I want is for them to want me and they just don't, and they're just like not really putting it in and not really doing anything, I just stop. Because I'm already leading myself down a path that I just do not want to have to reel from and get myself out of. And like, I already know the left on open playlist is going to be ringing through my car and I just don't even want that to happen. Like I can, I can picture it coming and I just don't even want it to happen. But, but then if like I'm really into them, then like whatever. Uh, we're we're going lock and loaded like it's happening Sophia storm is she's coming in there's definitely I agree like kind of a gray area we're like am I just like really a cr- craving attention today or do I actually like you or are you just a cool person like I don't know and I feel like that's kind of has to be like different for everybody and like a case-by-case scenario because sometimes like what Sophia said yeah all you want is attention and you know what that's okay sometimes that's all that's all I want to but like I feel like you have to make that distinction and also realize like okay maybe all I do want is attention from this person but is that necessarily a bad thing always I don't know I will say just on that note that I have some friends who are such attention grabbers. I want to say a bad word, but I'm not oh. going to say it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, yeah. like, I have seen them burn quite a few bridges because of this. And just, like, guys that would be really great friends and people that could be introduced to the friend group. But, like, no. Our friend just wanted attention. She just wanted him to fall in love. He did. She dropped him. Like, how many times have I seen this happen? Too many. So, in one way, be selfish, beg for that attention, but another way, like, be thinking about other people's feelings and realize that maybe your tendencies are low-key toxic and you can cut it. No, yeah, I definitely think some people might crave attention to an unhealthy extent, for whatever reason, to say that in a nice way. Um, But if that's you, like, in every every guy you try to talk to you're just like okay I don't actually like you but you're telling me I'm pretty you're telling me that you like me like okay sure maybe that's something that you need to unpack because of course sometimes I feel like you're like okay maybe I will have my little toxic moment but if that's you every day all year 
I don't know. I don't really support that. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna that's gonna be a no for me. I left my friend group. They made me feel like shit and always left me out of everything. And now I see them posting on social media together and with my replacement. How do I not get jealous when I don't even want to be friends with them? Oh my God, such a good question. Such a good question. Such a good question. Initially, what comes to me is the catfish fun people. They're not actually fun. And you know that because you were there. And there are so many friend groups these days who just are like, okay, camera's going on. Let's have fun. And then like, you're actually there with them and you know it's not fun. And like, I know what it's like to be on the other end of that. And I know what it's like to be a part of a group that is just posting because they're having fake fun. And it's fake. Like, there's nothing else to say to that. And if they were actually fun and actually great, enjoyable people, you would still be in that friend group. And if they were actually having fun, they would not be on social media. That is literally my theory. People who are, like, having the time of their life and, like, they're not posting it. They're not on their phones. They're not on Snapchat. They're not replying to everyone. Like, that's just not a thing. So just keep that in your mind. Just remember that they are really, they're not having as good of a time as you think they are. No, I totally agree about the posting thing. Like, because I always think, like, if I'm at a party or if I'm doing something, my first thought is never to, like, go on my phone. Like, if I'm really having fun, I'm not going to be on my phone. I'm going to be with the people who are actually there. Because if you're someone who's going on your phone, like, posting things, you're just trying to do that to show other people that you were there, that you are doing something. Even if it might not necessarily be fun, you can't really tell that through a screen. So I definitely like the catfishing fun thing. I've never heard that, and I think that is so funny. Um, But no, I just, I don't know. I feel like it's, you're definitely allowed to be, like, upset because obviously you've been friends with these people for a while, but it's, like, just seeing people constantly post something, even if you don't like them, even if you don't want to be their friend, that's just, it's, like, obnoxious and annoying, and it can be, like, hurtful, but I feel like more than anything, you're, like, okay, just stop, you know? I, um, didn't even praise this girl who wrote in this question that she is, like, leaving this friend group and really killing it on her own, and I'm proud of you for that. And you know what? People don't talk about how hard it is to quote-unquote move on. I mean, that is something that is, um, you know, a part of the process. Like, you leave a friend group, yeah, there's going to be stuff that you are missing. There are going to be things that you don't miss. But, like, I'm proud of you for really staying strong in this and, like, having that little, like, feeling of jealousy, insecurity, wishing that you were part of it, like, so okay, so okay. But you left that group for a reason. You left that group because they weren't good for you and you know what? They're not. So you're going to find better people. What do you think about being friends with guys? I get along better with them, but every guy I've ever been friends with has either liked me or ditched me for other guys. I need help on making and keeping guy friends. Please and thank you. Why is this just automatically giving me I'm different? I'm I'm like, I'm one of the guys. I'm not like other girls. I... No, no, it's not bad. Like, I, is it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, of course, you're allowed to have, like, guy friends, but it just annoys me when girls say, like, oh, I don't want to be friends with girls because they're there's so much drama. Like, I don't like being friends with girls. That That's just something that annoys me personally because I feel like you're trying to be better than everyone else. But also, if you get along better with guys, you get along better with guys like and that's okay I don't know but like do you because apparently your issue is that they keep leaving you so Uh, or you get along with them too well like I don't I don't know (laughs) yeah look I think you can be friends with guys and I'm sure that if that's working for you then go for it but like girls are pretty cool too like you might like me if you knew me and I'm a girl so yeah yeah I also feel like um for the guy friends liking you thing I feel like there's a way that like if you're actually good friends with a guy and you don't you don't like them that way you just want to be friends like you can tell them that and you can still be friends I feel like if you're that good of a friend with someone then everything will be fine but then again it's like if you're not friends with these people 
like they don't care they're used to getting rejected all the time they're they're like i like you and you're like no we're gonna be friends and they're like okay or they get mad and you're not friends anymore then it's like okay like did you want to be friends with them that bad anyway and like guys pretty much like anything that's walking so you could or not even but like you could fully they could fully move on and have other crushes and you could just stay friends so that's cool Okay, last question, and then we have a little surprise for the end. But last question, how do you deal with anxiety about school? I put so much pressure on myself too well, and it stresses me out. Yeah, pressure. I mean, I I totally get this. Junior year, second semester, senior year, second semester, tell us about pressure. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I want to tell you to, like, not feel it and that, like, your stress is like really bad and how can you ameliorate it and da 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 but like low-key I'm gonna give a hot take and say yeah pressure is just a part of it like there's nothing really you can do or say to fix that that's like being a second semester junior or senior I think if you're like a freshman who's like how am I gonna get into college like you can slow your roll on that or maybe you're taking too many hard classes and you can fix that with like whoever helps you with like your classes or your advisor or whatever but in general like yeah I mean if you're trying to go to college like you're going to be in the workforce one day, like pressure and stress. And that is a fuel in some ways, at least it is for me. And I think that you can have a healthy balance of pressure and relaxation and friendship and whatever it is, but pressure is going to be part of it. At least that's my opinion. No, I definitely agree about pressure being motivating because for me, at least most of my pressure comes from myself. Uh, Maybe for some other people, it's your family or your friends, but I always feel pressure for myself because I want to do the best that I can do. But then again, it's like if it gets to a certain point where you're so overwhelmed that you're not even doing the work, you're not even getting anything done, then that might be like just a sign saying, okay, maybe we need to calm down a little. But if it's like a healthy amount of like anxiety, a healthy amount of pressure where you're like, okay, I need to do well. I want to go to college. I want to go to this good school. If it's motivating you, then great. If it's not, maybe take a look at that and really think like, okay, what can I do to maybe minimize my pressure to make it more of a healthy thing? And I think that is just really subjective to you and your needs. Mm -hmm. I love that because, yeah, pressure is only detrimental when it's paralyzing. And if your pressure is paralyzing you instead of fueling you, that's a different story. Um, okay, so we have a few other questions that we think are really, really great questions. But instead of having them be responded through this podcast, we're going to actually write up answers and post it on the blog. And so I'm just going to quickly give you the general idea of each of them. So one of them, I felt like Carmen and I really connected over live once when we were talking about periods because she, cause she has some different tips than I do. So one of the questions is going to be about periods, which, you know, got to love it. Another question is going to be about um, friends that are kind of selfish and make things about them. Um, so I feel like we can all relate to that. And then the last one is going to be talking about uh, – you can say what the last one's about. Um, the last one is about dating if someone is a year older and one person is going to college and you're not and how to kind of handle that overall situation. Thank you, Sophia, for coming on. That was so fun. Thanks. Also, guys, make sure you check out the description of the episode to check out Sophia's blog and also her merch, which is super cute. And I definitely want the Hot Girls Camp Park shirt because I, in fact, cannot. So. Oh, me neither. Me neither. Yeah, guys, definitely check out the blog. Please get the merch if you're interested. So excited to be collabing today. This is so great. Okay, bye, y'all. Have a great week. Au revoir.